Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is isomorphic strings. So in this question, we're given two strings S and T and we have to determine if they are isomorphic. Two strings S and T are isomorphic if the characters in S can be replaced to get T. So we have to replace characters in S so that we get the string T. All occurrences of a character must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of characters. No two characters map to the same character but a character may map to itself. So this is a tricky description. If you understand what the question is asking and see how you can compare both the strings, this is a very simple question. So let's take a look at these examples and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the first example. In this case, S is equal to egg and E is equal to add. So in S, E is appearing once, G is appearing twice. And here in T, A is appearing once and D is appearing twice. So if you make this E into A, and if you make this G into D, both the characters in S and T are same. So that is why it is true. And here we have to see in this question that all occurrences of characters must be replaced with another character while preserving the order of uh, characters. So the order is also important, not just the value. So in this case, if you can see first F is appearing, which is one time, O is appearing twice. In this case, B is appearing once, A is appearing once and R is appearing once. Since these characters in S can't be transformed into the characters in T, so we return false as the output. Now let's take a look at the example 3 and do a dry run. Now in this case, let's take S. Since we have to deal with the characters, I'm going to use a map to store the characters. So I'm going to use a map because we are dealing with characters and let's see how we can use the map to form our output. So first let's process the S and in this S let's take the index positions. Now here as you can see now we iterate through the S from starting to end. We check if P is present inside the map. No P is not present inside the map so add it and set its index position as its value. So 0 will be added. Next we are at character A. A is not present so add it and set its index position. Next we are at character P. P is already occurring at 0th index position, so don't add it and let its initiancy remain. Now E is not present, so add it and set it free to its index position which is 3. R is not present, so add it and its index position is 4 which will be its value. Now let's do the same for string T. The index positions are 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now let's take a map again. Now we iterate character by character. T is not present, so add it and set it to its index position 0. I is not present, so add it set its value as its index position. T is already present inside the map, so you don't change its initial. L is not present, so add it and set its index as its value. E is not present, so add it and set its value as its index position 4. Now we have two maps ready, map 1 and map 2. Now using these index positions, let us map these values to the original string. So P has the value 0, so P becomes 0. A has the value 1, so it becomes 1. P has the value 0, so it becomes 0. E has the value 3, so this becomes 3 and r has a value 4 so this is the value and this will be a string so that we can compare it with t. Now let's do the same for this map. t has a value 0, i has a value 1, t has a value 0, l has a value 3 and e has a value 4 and this is also a string. And now if you observe both the strings, this string 0 1 0 3 4 is equal to 0 1 0 3 4 and that is why since both of them are same after transforming we return true. And why are we choosing the initial index positions? Because we have to maintain the order of insertion and we are checking if a character has already been occurred inside the map. Here P has a value 2 but P is already having a value 0. So don't override it. Let that initial C remain. And with this approach you are going to build this transform string and do the same for the T string. If both the strings are same we return true. Now let's take a look at the code using this approach. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name. And these are the two strings S and T given as inputs. And we have to return a boolean value true or false as the output. So like we discussed, we have to first create a helper function. And this helper function is going to return a string which will contain the index positions of the first occurrence as a string. I'm going to name it helper. And this will take a single string as the parameter. And now we are going to call this helper function inside and first pass the string s as a parameter and then check if the string is equal to and call the helper function again for the string t and if both these strings so this will return a string for string s and this will return a string for string t and we are checking if both these strings are same if it is same it will return true else it will return false because we need to return a boolean value so inside this helper function we have to first declare a map 
so i create a map which is first going to take a character as a key and integer as a value so this is going to be a hash map so this character is going to represent the characters present inside the string as str and this integer is going to represent the index position of its first occurrence so we have to iterate through the string str i create a for loop and we start with the zeroth index and go until the end of the str string and keep incrementing i by one each time and now we need to build our string right so first i'm going to create a string builder and later we can convert this into a string now let's access each character where i is pointing to so i create a variable ch use the caret method where i is pointing to we get that character and store it inside the variable ch now we have to check if the ch is present inside the map if it is not present we have to insert that character into the map as a key and its index position where it's occurring as its value so if this character is not present inside the map so if map dot contains key is not present inside the map then insert that character into the map as key and set its index as its value so this will happen for every unique character and from the next time if you find the same character you shouldn't update it we are going to convert every character with its first index position where it's occurring now we have to build our string so we append so i use the append method on the string builder to build the string builder and now we have to append this index position as a string so i use the integer the to string method and where is this index position present it is present inside the map as its value so use this uh, ch to get that value so map dot get of ch will give you the index position now after appending every index position as a string we have to differentiate it before starting the next iteration let's separate those two index positions by appending a special character i'm going to append a hyphen you can append any character so this will happen for all the strings present inside this helper function str input and we are calling that on the string s and we are calling that on a string t if both the strings are matching it will return true else it will return false and outside the for loop we have to return a string right but we have our output present inside a string builder as we so convert the string builder into a string using the to string method and return it now let's try to run the code the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so here as you can see this is the input string s and t this should return false let's do a dry run for these test cases and justify how we are getting false 